Francis II Gunn Crowley, brought a reign of terror onto the streets of New York in the 1930s with the climax of a two-hour shootout, with police that was witnessed by up to 15,000. Bystanders gathered to watch the drama unfold. Francis Crowley, was from the wrong side of the tracks, a bad boy who would regularly get into fights, being small and skinny he had much to prove. He would usually pick fights with people who were bigger than him. Crowley would never be more than 5 foot 6 in height, with a case of small man syndrome and a fierce temper. He looked more like a 10 year old boy, than a 19 year old adult. He always carried two guns on him, hence the nickname. Crowley was an American gangster wannabe and cop killer. He was the boy who caused the infamous siege of 90th Street. His crime spree lasted nearly three months, ending in a two-hour shootout with the New York Police Department on May 7, 1931. The second son of an unwed German mother who gave him up for adoption. He had a hatred for police, with some speculating that his absent father was a police officer. This hatred for the police, was compounded by police killing his brother John when Crowley was 12 years old. John was alleged to be involved in the killing of NYPD officer. Maurice Harlow on February 22, 1925. Shortly thereafter John Crowley was killed in a confrontation with police officers, while resisting arrest on a charge of disorderly conduct. By his late teens, Francis Crowley had a reputation as a troubled youth with a criminal history. On February 21, 1931, Crowley and two other young men crashed a dance hosted by the American Legion in the Bronx. Several Legionnaires tried to remove them from the venue, so Crowley drew a gun and wounded two men before fleeing. He was charged with attempted murder and went into hiding. He was confronted by police on March 13. He escaped into an office building on Lexington Avenue after shooting Detective Ferdinand Chettle. Two days later, Crowley and four others robbed a bank in New Rochelle, New York. A month later, Crowley and two friends broke into the West 90th Street apartment of real estate broker Rudolf Adler. Adler attempted to resist them and Crowley shot him five times using two pistols, which earned him the nickname Two Gun. Adler's dog, Trixie attacked the robbers and drove them from the house, saving her owner's life. On April 27, Crowley was out joyriding in a stolen vehicle with his partner Rudolph Fats during her and dance hall hostess Virginia Brannan. Brannan resisted Duringer's advances, so Duringer shot and killed her while still in the car. Crowley then helped him dump her body at St. Joseph's Seminary in Yonkers. New York City police found Brannan's body and escalated their efforts to find Crowley. On April 29, he was spotted in the Bronx driving a green Chrysler Imperial sedan along 138th Street near the Morris Avenue Bridge. Police pursued him, but he escaped after a running gun battle. Detectives found that the bullets extracted from a police car matched those that killed Virginia Brannan and those from other unsolved shootings. The following day, Crowley's car was found abandoned with bullet holes and blood stains on the inside. On May 6, Crowley was sitting in a parked car with his 16-year-old girlfriend Helen Walsh on Morris Lane in North Merrick, Long Island when he was approached by police officers Frederick Hirsch and Peter Yotis, who asked for identification. 
Crowley fired at them, killing Hirsch and wounding Yotis. He then sped off. The following day, Crowley, Walsh, and Duringer were tracked down to a fifth floor apartment in a rooming house on West 91st Street. The residence belonged to a former lover of Crowley's, who notified the police upon seeing Crowley with another woman. Outside the building, a force of 300 police officers armed with rifles, machine guns, and tear gas assembled. The events attracted 15,000 bystanders. Crowley and the police exchanged gunfire for nearly two hours with the police firing an estimated 700 rounds into the building. While Walsh and Duringer reloaded Crowley's pistols, Crowley threw back several tear gas grenades that the police had thrown into the apartment through a hole cut into the roof. After suffering four gunshot wounds and bleeding heavily, he finally surrendered. Arresting officers found two pistols strapped to his legs. On May 29, less than three weeks after his arrest, Crowley was tried and convicted of the murder of police officer Frederick Hirsch. His partner, Fats Duringer, was found guilty of the murder of Virginia Brannan. Both men were sentenced to death on June 1st. Crowley was sentenced to death by electric chair. Crowley spent his last year on death row at Sing Sing Prison in Ossining, New York. He remained a disciplinary problem, stuffing his prison uniform down a toilet, setting fire to his bed, and frequently crafting homemade weapons. His attitude became somewhat more serene as his execution neared. He reportedly adopted a starling that frequently flew into his cell. On January 21, 1932, Crowley's last words to Warden Lewis Laws were, to ask for a rag. Fat Derringer was executed before Crowley. Francis Crowley wanted to clean the electric chair, because he wanted to wipe off whatever his friend might left on the chair. Referring to Duringer's death, in the same electric chair, Crowley said, I want to wipe off the chair after this rat sat in it. It is not clear if the request was granted. Crowley was 19 when he was executed. Thank you for watching Death Row.